Hey everyone and welcome to the course on using Docker for effective Linux virtualization. I'd like to introduce myself a little bit, especially about uh, how I've worked with Docker. So currently I'm using Docker in production for uh, developing new web apps for our company and using Docker on physical servers I've gotten a chance to learn about the precautions and requirements that are necessary for using Docker in production. And so I created this course so that I could share with you the knowledge that I've learned while doing this and hope that you can benefit from being able to virtualize in a very scalable, very effective way um, in case virtualization is required for your field as well. This lecture is just going to do a quick course overview about what's going to be covered in this course and in what order. The first section is going to be an introductory section that's going to first introduce virtualization in case you're not familiar with it. There are about two lectures on virtualization and these two lectures also cover the difference between virtualization using hypervisor and using Docker containers or just containers of any kind. And then the last uh, sort of lecture, it's, it's almost like a pamphlet handout, um, is on installation instructions and another lecture is on what to do if you're having trouble installing. And then the second section is about getting started with our first container. And this is going to cover uh, the basics such as um, setting up an SSH service, so things that you would do on a server normally before you have it all set up, so you'd probably want to install SSH so that you can access it remotely without having to be physically in the server's presence at all times, um, as well as opening up the required ports on the server using Docker so that you can host applications connect to databases and things like that. And one of the things about Docker is that the commands can get pretty long. So as part of section two, we're also going to cover how to use aliases effectively to be able to shorten the commands that we run. And the third section is when we really get into the nitty gritty about what's required to use Docker effectively in production. And this is going to involve uh, working with a GUI-based FTP service such as CyberDuck. Um, there are a few other ones, but CyberDuck is the one that's covered, uh, as well as how to run containers forever using Supervisor, and also how to make your SSH containers more secure. Finally, we're going to run an HTTP server, and then as sort of uh, the overarching capstone, so to speak, we're going to have a lecture on how to containerize a basic application that requires database access, um, response to HTTP service, and um, we're also going to get into how to run multiple applications like this on one Docker instance. So that's an overview of the course. 